everybody out here to make sure that you're registered to vote, to make sure that your friends are registered to vote. Black lives matter. Black lives matter. We're here in Cleveland outside the venue for the first presidential debate. There's a lot of people out here protesting Trump, but also talking about how they're going to actually cast their ballots this fall. There are a whole lot of issues with uh, uh, mail-in voting. I'm older. I, I intend to go down and vote. I'm going to cast my ballot through the mail. The communities have spoken. We're going to stand in line like we stood in line for Obama. And why are you doing in-person versus absentee? Well, I mean, you hate to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but like, I don't trust it. Voting in person is the best way that I could guarantee that my vote's going to be counted. Early voting is underway in the swing state of Ohio, and it's already marked by suspicion and lawsuits. According to a Vice News investigation, Ohio will have 860 fewer polling places than in 2016, a 20% reduction and the fifth largest cut in the nation. Across the country, almost 21,000 polls have closed since 2016. And in some cases, critics say the government has done little to make absentee voting easier. Ohio has limited ballot drop box locations to one per county and hasn't included return stamps with mail-in ballots, both of which are likely to affect minority communities more than others. Inside this packet is what they receive to start filling their vote by mail out. So this is the ballot? So this is the ballot. This is what, when we mailing ballots, this is what you get. So this is a new machine, right? Brand new. And it's gonna help you with all of the influx of mail It is ballots. a game changer. In Cuyahoga County, home to Cleveland, the Board of Elections is scrambling to keep up with new demand, address voter confusion, and operate as best they can during a pandemic. I think the largest challenge at this point is ensuring that we are getting the same message and clear message out to all the voters about deadlines and dates as far as vote by mail. I think a lot of voters for the first time in this election will be casting their ballot different than they ever have in previous elections. And just getting those voters used to the different types of that process and when they have to turn in the application and that it actually takes an application to get a ballot here in Ohio. I mean, we're working through those challenges, but it's just, you know, voters are, are really taking advantage of uh, a different type of voting and it's completely new to a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to or can't vote in person but they also don't trust their mail-in vote will be counted. That leaves ballot drop boxes. But because there's only one location allowed per county, Ohio residents face typical driving times of up to 23.4 minutes in some places. And for those without cars, the journey can take up to 1.4 hours on public transit. Do you think all these obstacles to absentee voting are by design? Not necessarily. I think some of it is just fear of change. With that said, I'm sure there are some individuals who um, just are really afraid of what happens when we change voting processes in terms of outcomes and turnout. To be clear, they're afraid Democrats will win. Yeah. Jen Miller is the executive director of League of Women Voters Ohio. In August, her group brought a lawsuit challenging Ohio Secretary of State Frank LaRose over that Dropbox limit. Why are drop boxes for ballots so important? So first off, drop boxes can be used to drop off not just your ballot, but also your absentee request form and your voter registration form. So having those throughout a county could make a really big difference, especially for seniors or people with disabilities, people who don't drive, um, as well as, you know, just folks who are worried about the Postal Service or maybe they don't have stamps. And so drop boxes are a great accessibility tool. At the moment, the drop box issue is still tied up in the courts. There's a reason people don't trust voting absentee this year. President Trump has been sowing unfounded mistrust about mail-in voting. Mail ballots, they cheat, okay? People cheat. Mail ballots are a very dangerous thing for this country because they're cheaters. They go and collect them. They're fraudulent in many cases. Do you think your Secretary of State is being influenced by President Trump's disparaging of mail-in voting? I do worry a little bit that he's not um, being as entrepreneurial as he could be with, say, something like drop boxes, either because of um, fear of, of Trump or, or just maybe that his party of, of lawmakers or allies are kind of buying into that dogma. You're being very diplomatic. The Secretary <laughs> of State is currently fighting every lawsuit that you bring to try to expand voting in the state. Yep. 
So how is this not an effort to undermine your work? I mean, look, I, I wish he would settle with us. I wish he would come to the table and, and work with us. I think we have a good sense as to what voters need and want out of this election. Barriers to voting often affect communities of color disproportionately. And some advocates say that's the case in Ohio this election. Do you think we'll see racial disparities with mail-in voting? Absolutely. Kayla Griffin is the Ohio State Director of a nonprofit called All Voting is Local. And COVID is only expounding on racial disparity issues. This is, you know, a black neighborhood that we're sitting in. And they're like, no, I don't trust the post office on a regular. You know, our, our mail gets here late or things get lost in the mail. And unfortunately, we have seen so many barriers in black and brown communities that folks are like, nope, unless I see it handed and put in the ballot box, then I don't trust it. So a lot of these proposals for expanding voting in the state are just being flat out rejected. Do you think this is voter suppression? Absolutely. There has always been um, some level of suppression to ensure that black and brown voters do not have access to the ballot. And we are just seeing it done in a more sophisticated way in 2020. It's limiting access to drop boxes. It is telling people that you have to pay for the postage in order to return your ballot, which is a modern day poll tax. If a person has to decide between buying stamps and paying for food for their child because um, people don't know you can't go and buy a single stamp at the post office. You got to buy a book of stamps. You know, we're looking at them saying, why aren't you making this easier for us? And in Ohio, that's an especially big deal. This swing state is one of relatively few where President Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden appear to be nearly tied. So every ballot truly matters. We probably would not have this conversation if we were not in a global pandemic. Right? Like, we have to remember, like, we're sitting here talking with masks on instead of talking face to face. And so there is still a, a risk of people being in close contact and close proximity. So we have to think of what our elections look like differently.